Bon dia. Hello and good morning to one and all. I would like to start by thanking you all for allowing me to share some of the remarks and ideas that somehow inspire our vision about why arts are so important for public health, for health in general, and I would like to also raise other topics such as why or how are we implementing arts in health. The minister has already give you, given you a hint. I would like to start by asking you to look back a few months ago here in this very same room, in this very same oval room, there was an exhibition, an exhibition that would somehow ask visitors about their role in the world. Jordi Bernardo, who is a Catalan photographer, who implemented this project ID and identity, took pictures of 14 very relevant personalities in different fields of knowledge, different fields of life at the global perspective, at the global level, Stephen Hopkins, the um, developer of Wikipedia, relevant personalities from the feminist movements, and he asked them to take one single picture of them from their backs without taking the picture of the face, let's say. So in this, the, the picture somehow had to be taken in this scenario where they have a role, let's say. So this experiencing, this, this experience of asking oneself, what is my role in this world? Where am I entitled to be myself? I believe this is one of the main questions that art helps us respond. So here we have the picture of Stephen Hopkins in front of his lap, this math lap in Cambridge. And this one is the last picture that was taken to Stephen Hopkins while he was alive, or rather before, before he passed out, passed away. <laughs> so as you can see in this picture, you can even see the moon. So when you can, I mean, these pictures with the uh, digital format allowed you to see the moon. And I believe this underlines the essence of all the persons here. So the potential that art has to introduce somehow question marks, to take the present and make it universal, to allow it to represent all our life, to, let's say, reflect about our role in the world because our role in the world defines our life and our health. As the minister said, 80% of health determinants happen outside the health system. Health determinants have to do with the place where we have been born, luckily or unluckily, or the environment where we have been raised, where we have developed all our knowledge. The education system, for example, is a clear health. Um, indicator or having one health system or another, right? As it has been said before, uh, we count on the participation of the arts in health representative at the WHO. And there is no doubt that having universal health systems, multidisciplinary health systems with a clear focus on health are key in order to promote health. So. This really defines our health. And by the way, I would like to say also that having the possibility of enjoying art is a health determinant. This sculpture is a post-Olympic sculpture in, a, in an Olympic neighborhood. In Atlanta in 1996, they replicated it. And in this sculpture, we can see 
a great array of color because Atlanta is a diverse city, multiracial environment, and this sculpture represents the universe in one single environment. This is in the Bolutaris Square. We had 30,000 volunteers in the Barcelona Olympics. This was a milestone. It is very important to have social tissue, community networks, contacts, communities, people, all this is very important for health. So, back in 1996, Dumas died and, as you can see in this sculpture, there is a framework. This is the way to project oneself to the future in order to enter year 2000 and looking from this framework, the world towards the future. And if you look back here, you will see another sculpture, the largest one, the one near the Arts Hotel. So here's another sculpture entitled David and Goliath. Very well known in the Olympic Village here in Barcelona by Antoni Lena. And this sculpture basically confronts the Summer Rostro neighborhood and the new Olympic Village. Who is the beat and who is Goliard? What's past and what's present? present? So, when we walk around cities, it's like we walk around museums and images somehow make us resonate and give us a framework for our own development. And again, this is yet another element that enriches our lives and contributes to a better health. So a country that places art in the center. Well, these days we are speaking more and more about the need to have more green areas. And we say that we have seven square meters of green areas as a standard. But we don't know what the standard is about art per inhabitant. But of course, this, has, this would have to be researched, right, upon, because beauty is important and having art around us is key. So the idea that I would like to share with you is that health is only possible in the environment where people live. Health is only possible in this framework, so art has to be a pillar. And health is not limited to humankind. See, we have not yet overcome the zoonosis that COVID has imposed upon us, but you know, we have a flu, peaks in Catalonia and all around Europe. So in this environment, unless we take care of animal health and the planet health, it's like we're not taking care of our own health because of course there's one health. And if one pillar of the one health fails, we will fail. The donut model by Kate Ronworth tells us that we need to work on social health determinants from an individual perspective, yes, but bearing in mind that we live in an interrelated planet in which unless we take care of community health and animal health, our health will be jeopardized. So we need to take this perspective from a community health perspective. We call it the One Health Perspective. And these green items here have to do with a perfect scenario, a scenario that allow people to reach the, their full potential, best possible education, and at the same time, bearing in mind that all this cannot have an impact on the environment. Such as, for example, if we spend too much water, too much energy, and we somehow deplete 
the plan for natural resources, we will not be contributing to One Health. So this part of the donut, this green part of the donut, has to do with the best development scenario, which is a safe development that affects and benefits both humankind and societies. The problem is that we are using too much water, too much energy resources. The problem is that we are using too many natural resources, and now we need to take urgent action on all these elements. And of course, this is yet another relevant item. This gentleman here, who is Antonovsky, probably many of you working in health and primary care know him. He was the one who created the theory of health or genesis. He was the one who said that in order to promote health, we need to focus on the community assets and we need to reinforce them. We need to promote them within communities to reinforce the previous elements. And in this environment, <clears throat> we need to promote human relationships. We know, for example, that one of the key health determinants are social relationships. As you know, there is a long Harvard research with a follow-up period of 80 years because the project started back at the 30s in the last century. And there has been a follow-up of a first cohort of 800 people. And there is a clear difference between those who live more, who live longer and who live better. Well, all this has to do with the quality of their social relationships, not the amount of social relationships, but the quality of social relationships. Feeling surrounded by a friendly environment is a health determinant. So if we want to work on health, we need to work on resources, we need to work on the community to develop healthy environments. And I would like to share this concept with you, which is very dear to me. I hold it very dear. And conditions or diseases and health are contagious. There is a direct relation between people with obesity. There's a mapping of obesity. And it seems like people with obesity are together because if I speak in a certain way, or if I never do sports, I will end up having relationships with people who have similar tastes, and the same will apply to him or her. And one day we'll say, let's not walk up the stairs, let's take the lift, or let's drive everywhere, right? So at the end of the day, what we can see in this research is that there is what happens to me is probably similar to what happens to a person whom I don't know, but perhaps my friends know. So this relationship is contagious, and this is a condition, obesity, the same applies to tobacconism. Back in the 70s, smoking was contagious, and 30 years after quitting smoking is contagious, and this is happening today, right? We were speaking about this regarding physical activity, which is one of the best indicators. More than 80% of our population are okay when it comes to physical activity. Of course, there's a lot of work ahead, but there is this interesting percentage, 80%, and this is thanks to the joint effort promoted by the Secretariat for Sports, but also because it's trendy, because people today feel good when they do sports, when they play sports, because they produce, because sports contributes to endorphin production and avoiding depression. I am sure that we can carry out a diagram of physical activity, and there is no doubt that many people somehow infect others with this willingness to the sports. So that's very important, these two graphs apply to New England. So the top of scientific reviews 
or magazines in medicine and the same applies to happiness. Happiness is also contagious and other health determinants as well. Framingart, the best follow-up research ever produced. So, we can put a violin player in our life, which is also contagious. Joan Valls, a pediatrician from San Juan de Deu, who plays the violin before performing an operation on children at his hospital. He started this practice in Valdebron when he was a student, and now that he's a resident doctor in San Juan de Deu, he keeps playing the violin. Here's another concept that I wanted to raise. Health is a right, the, and, and so is art and culture, the right to enjoy culture recognized by the United Nations. So this is what we are working on, not only from an equity perspective, but also from a justice perspective. The difference between equality and justice, well, equality has to do with giving more to those who need more. Tomorrow we'll be speaking about this project, Emotions and Health Pilot Projects, of course, are focused on vulnerable populations, but justice has to do with raising the bar and ensuring that we do not have to give more to vulnerable populations because culture is accessible and Everyone can have access to it with no limits, so we need to build from the beginning with no barriers. This is very important. Yes. Now, this is part of the World HO's webpage, and it's the reference document for the summary of the evidence, which was done in 2019, reviewed by Macmeth out of 3,000 studies, which showed that if good effects on health from different art disciplines. So it's very, very relevant indeed. And here there are some studies mentioned by the minister beforehand, the Swedish study from 1996. It is a study with 1,000 participants. And what this is that participating in arts activities is related to a higher survival rate, a clear higher survival rate, eight years difference. And this is controlled by the classic risk factors, whether they smoke, whether they have physical activity, etc., etc. So it's crucial. 96 in Sweden, 22,000 people in the UK in 2019, and a study made by Daisy Van Kor, who is the main editor of the evidence. Uh, edition that we saw in Europe before, and it shows the same with people, middle-aged people. So there is clear evidence of the positive effect of arts on health. And this is with regards to art in museums, going to the theatre, going to a concert, going to an exhibition. And these are the review Hot Plus One, which is also one of the most prestigious magazines in 2021. It also looks at when you are truly carrying out an art, uh, art activity, in this case, musical activities. For example, dancing, playing music, singing, the effect that has on health. And here we also find a positive effect in different health fields in general. So we find these positive effects on health both by participating regularly. It could be 30 or 60 minutes a week, which is not too much. And both, you know, participating or actually doing arts activities. And this is a model that I'm not going to dwell in, but we see there are some behavioral effects, some social effects, and some physiological effects. And at the end of the day, this is good both for prevention, for a conditions uh, management, etc., etc. And here 
well, given that you will sh I'll, I'll, I'll share my presentation, you can see it in detail, how the different effects have been studied, how they have been described in a clear way. There is also a document from Motions and Health, which will be explained clearly. And here we also have the importance within the lessons we have learned from COVID. One of the positive effects is the need to include cultural values when it comes to designing public policies. We have seen it, for example, the use of masks and the effect that has had on people with different backgrounds. And also, when at the end, when we have behind our cultural values, the way to reach, the way to change, the way to include and generate these changes can also be done through a cooperation from uh, the, co the, the, the field of culture and art. So today and tomorrow, you will see multiple experiences, different experiences of successful projects between arts and health, or the art in health. There are many others, and they could have been, I mean, they've been collected, and I'm sure they are very, very relevant indeed. But what we have to do, and the, the minister said so beforehand, we have to make progress so that this is all fully integrated and it's all part of a plan. Here you have a slide that comes from the Finnish government. Finland is a reference country for health in all policies. Uh, every time Finland has had the presidency of the EU, it has made, well, it, it has thrusted forward art policies in health and it's a proposal it's a global proposal for arts and health which has the different ministries involved which asks for a joint plan at the end the ministry of culture and the ministry of health and the ministry of social services which in finland is all together and also the ministry of, e of finance each one of them looks at how they can have a g the ministry of culture can have a good system and how artists can actually have their subsistence taken care of. And those in uh, the Ministry of Health can recommend these activities and co-create them in the cultural system. And also the Ministry of Finance can also give support to it in order to have joint initiative actions that are that focus on initiatives that are assessed and that have a result on health of all other people included and above all people who have a socio-economic level that's lower. Finland's experience is one of the experiences we're using to build up our project for arts and health. And here we have another image and this is an image by Jaume Plenza, the famous sculpture at the clinic hospital. I'm sure you have seen it. It's called Blue. And we have this image. When we get into the hospital, somehow they express that we need to stop, we need to think, and we need to focus on, uh, a si on the situation. When we go to hospital, the rest becomes secondary, and we are there. We are at the hospital to solve a problem, our, our own health problem. Jean Maplenza gave it as a gift to actually make an homage to the work of health workers during the pandemic. In Catalonia, it started with the law of 2009, approved by all political parties. We had a first, a first ratification in 2014, which already had a chapter devoted to culture and physical activity and health. And then we, the, uh, we assessed it, and then we had a second edition in which we had a component devoted to arts and health. And right now, it is fully integrated in the health plan. A very significant part of health in all sustainable policies. And we are developing the new Pins Up edition, which has a chapter devoted to arts and health. And within the Pins Up, the interministerial plan, we have always had a community vision of health, the concept that we build up our health outside of the health sector, working with the whole community, but by playing our key 
role as a health institution, and we work on certain specific items, working in a participative way by assessing and working to improve the resources and the assets that the community has. And another significant initiative action of PINSOP is the assets map, in which in a community way, we collect at a community level the resources and assets that the community itself values to generate health. And we have more than 1,500 assets identified in Catalonia. And in Catalonia, we have had as a resource all of the museums, all of the libraries, all of the centers and cultural centers, because globally, all of this is an asset. It's a resource for health. We, we can activate it more when we work together, but it is already there. And it is part of the social prestige program, which is another initiative action primary health professionals, nurses and physicians can prescribe a health asset based on this first community work that has been carried out in the environment so that it's included within the the assets map so that there is an active listening with the people that you have in front of you and that you're helping so that there is already this recommendation actively. You can do it at the doctor's office and so that it ends up in a recommendation to go to a museum to carry out a specific activity. So this is the map, which is a community map. This is the trajectory. This is the pathway and this is a guideline. And these are a few of the results. Just last year, 8,100 people received a recommendation about an asset. 63% showed an improvement in their emotional welfare at ECAP. We have emotional welfare tests and other indicators that are useful to measure the social prestige program. And you can see that there is a good link with the activity it recommends. Now, this is quite distinctive with regards to other regions in Spain that have not deployed this. And we're also giving training for the new roles the new the reference people for econ emotional welfare and all of the people working on it. And we're working so that everywhere there is a social prestige reference. These would be the benefits and these would be the potential. Now, to end my presentation, I'd like to say that, well, how art are faring in the field of health at the pins up. We started out with initiative actions like letters and health and others that were collected in the first pins up. And then after that, we made an integration within the assets map, these resources, culture and art. And then after 2019, we developed the Emotions and Health Commissioned, and we developed the whole project called Emotions and Health that Sonia Blasco will explain tomorrow. And now we want to develop this global project in art, arts in health, art in health. What does art in health actually mean? Well, what I've said beforehand, the minister has actually explained it too. I mean, somehow what we want is to have a systematic pool in the for the integration of community intersectoral processes in the health sector, co-creation with specific goals, with a specific goal that has been reached by consensus between all parties involved, so that they work on health and welfare in a specific population with, a, with, a, with an equity and justice prospect equality and that's the mission for this project that we want to actually end and to sum up i've wanted to explain to you i've wanted to convey that culture and art are fundamental rights and they are crucial for our health and for our welfare
for our well-being and improve health in many different fields. I'm not going to get into the details now, but you shall do so during the next two days. They exist. There are many, many activities that exist that, that we can do as a consultation. I mean, uh, the, the social prescription is to do it as a consultation. In terms of activities, many of the activities that will be explained these days, I mean, they work for a group of people with certain specific characteristics, and they use this social relationship for interaction with the group, but at a community level too, when we actually get much more from the whole community. So, we need to systemize and extend the interventions with verified efficient efficiency, for example, social prescription. And we need to implement and we need to end developing and agreeing with the social, with global project, all in health. And to end, I have here a couple of sentences. One is by Chris Bailey, Christopher Bailey. Chris, Chris, we have her hair at the front row. And it's a bit, I mean, you know, I'm, I'm being a bit, you know, uh, I mean, to use a sentence and a quote from a person who will talk to us. There is a sentence by the Director General of the World Health Organization that says, who talks about the importance. This is a symposium in 2021 at the Metropolitan Museum of New York. Guillaume was there. And what, did, what the Director General of the WHO is that he's especially happy and honored by the fact that museums like the museum where we find ourselves here today include or think about their missions in order to stop being just repositories of art objects and to become a community asset for the health and the well-being of the community they serve. A tool for well-being and health. Given the experience that we have at the Ministry of Health, we know this is a shared thought. And Christopher Bailey, I mean, we have a big, big body of evidence that says that to involve arts or to use art or to include art in health environment improves health results. It reduces costs and we also want to be cost effective and it gives support to the recovery of the patient from a condition to back to health. It is the time has come for a revolution of arts in people's health. And this can imply the improvement of health of millions of people. And finally, last but not least, I've started out with the MNAC and uh, with Jordi Bernardo, and we will explain with an exhibition with a piece from the, our permanent collection, which is this episode of Anao in Santa Maria of Anao, uh, the municipality of Gingeta. Look at it. Look how something that is, uh, is a thousand years old can be so contemporary, so current. And Guillaume has chosen this image. Somehow, these angels, these archangels, are look, they are looking at us and they are questioning us and they are calling us to think about our life and our future. Thank you very much indeed.